Hello, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. Uh, this is kind of part three of our uh, little um, servo series that uh, I've been doing to uh, augment the information on my RC servo page on my website, which I link to below again in the description. The first two videos we talked about the PWM signal, pulse width modulation signal, about how the width of that signal dictates servo position and the frequency at which that signal refreshes. And uh, we talked about the normal 50 hertz frequency that you'd get out of the receiver, and then the higher frequencies that you get out of today's fly barless units. This last part, we're gonna talk about the difference between digital and analog servos to uh, help clarify the information on my webpage under that section. As I st state on that page, physically there's really no difference between an analog and a digital. What we're going to look at here is instead of looking at the PWM signal going into the servo from the receiver, uh, we're actually going to see what the motor sees as far as voltage uh, goes on the, on the time scale on our oscilloscope. The oscilloscope measures voltage changes over time. I've just got my oscilloscope probes hooked directly to the motor inputs. And the motor is hooked up to our rudder channel still, powering the RX off a 6-volt LIFE pack. As you can see, the receiver is getting the signal from our radio. And there's all kinds of interesting stuff going on. So we're going to zoom into the screen so we can uh, start deciphering what's going on here. Okay, so we're starting with our analog servo. I've done the same thing with a digital servo, which we'll get to later. And again, this is just how that... Uh, this video is just showing how that signal coming in, that PWM signal, is processed, the difference between the two. Um, the analog servo, what I'm gonna, you'll see if I, you'll see the signal if I move the stick, but it's really noisy. There's a lot of noise coming out of that motor. The better way to do this is I'm actually gonna try to force the motor off center. And the signal's quite a bit clearer then. Like I said, we're powering this off of a 6-volt battery, uh, so let's just see what the voltage that the motor is seeing. We would expect it to be 6 volts, roughly, and we're on a, a scale of 2 volts per division here on our scope. So each one of these uh, um, bars or lines is a 2-volt division, two two division, so 2, 4, 6. So it starts out just a little bit above 6 volts, about 6.4 or so, but as soon as some load is applied, uh, the voltage drops just to about maybe what 5.8 or so, just a little bit below. But let's just say, for all intents and purposes, that you know the motor sees essentially what the battery is putting out. And like I said on the servo page, with an analog servo or with any servo, uh, the voltage to the motor doesn't increase and decrease to make it move slower or work harder. All that happens is that voltage pulse will stay on for a longer period of time, the greater the call for power is. So if I'm just pushing a, a little pressure on this servo wheel, trying to force it off center, you can see the little pulses. I'm going to get my paw out of the way here. But you can see the little pulses are very short. You've got this little 6 volt pulse, and then it drops off to 0 volts, comes back up, little 6 volt on pulse, drops back down. But if I increase the, if I try to force it off center more and more, giving it more and more force, you can see that pulse stays on for much longer duration. The more force I give it, the longer the voltage on pulse becomes. And I don't know if you can see this, I'm going to turn the intensity up a bit. You'll notice after the pulse turns off, there's this sharp voltage drop below zero volts. If uh, any electrical engineers want to comment on this, or anyone who knows what might be going on here, I suspect what this sharp voltage drop is, is we've built up, uh, you know, there's voltage going through the motor coils, or the windings, and when the, when the voltage is turned off, that winding, uh, the magnetic field collapses, and you get that negative pulse as the field collapses. Then we're back to zero volts, voltage comes back on, voltage is turned off, field collapses, you get the negative pulse. That's what I think that is. But anyways, the, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I just thought it was kind of interesting what that negative pulse is. There's that voltage. And what I really wanted to show here was the frequency. Um, 
we're at 5 milliseconds per division and if you recall our receiver is outputting 50 uh, the PWM signal is occurring 50 times a second and with our analog servo it's sending pulses to the motor also at 50 times per second uh, five, 5 milliseconds per division 5, 10, 15, 20 restarts 10, 15, 20 and if you do the calculation 20 milliseconds works out to a frequency of 50 Hertz so that's primarily the difference between an analog servo and a digital an analog servo takes that same frequency rate and converts it amplifies it into motor, motor voltage at the same uh, same type of frequency whereas digital it processes that 50 Hertz frequency coming in from the receiver into a much higher uh, frequency rate being sent to the motor which we'll demonstrate right now okay so we're back with our digital servo example now of what the motor sees uh, I've done the same thing with the digital servo I've just soldered two wires onto the uh, to the inputs to the motor and I don't want those to touch as far as our oscilloscope probe goes we've got the one probe lead hooked up to the one wire and our ground uh, from our probe hooked up to the other so the oscilloscope is measuring now what the motor is seeing and if you recall on our um, analog servo uh, we're at our we're at five milliseconds to per division we were seeing a, um, a motor pulse reoccur every uh, 20 milliseconds so again the same 50 millisecond refresh rate that the receiver is sending to the servo that's the same frequency at which the servo an analog servo would send voltage pulses to the motor now on the digital if we do the same thing you can see a lot more stuff going on as far as the voltage though goes it's still the motor is seeing roughly the same voltage as what the battery is outputting in this case it's a six volt battery we're at two volts per division so two four six it's so right around six volts but you can see a lot, lot, lot there's a lot more there's a lot more pulses happening every second than with the analog or five milliseconds per scale so let's zoom in to see what's going on here okay now this is interesting first thing we're seeing are these blocks if we actually let's just see what the frequency of these little blocks are so it's one two three point three roughly blocks and we're at one millisecond per division so one point well, maybe three point two that's what's nice about a digital scope the newer digital scopes they'd, they'd give you all this they'd tell you what the actual uh, what that rate was if you selected it but anyways uh, so let's figure out what the frequency was there what it was 3.3 milliseconds I said so um, frequency is 1 over the count so 1 divided by 3.3 .303 times a thousand to give us our answer in Hertz so 303 Hertz and coincidentally I don't know if you can hear the servo buzzing but that would that sounds like about a 300 Hertz frequency so again like I said on my digital page or on my servo page when you hear digital servos make that buzzing noise it's just because of how many you know how many times that motor is being sent signals and that's why they buzz but what I wasn't expecting was to see just how many like that's already a pretty high frequency rate like 300 Hertz but it's getting a lot more pulses than that every second you know that's just these blocks and then these blocks restart but within these pulse blocks we really start seeing what's going on so now we're into the microsecond scale and you can see there's a lot going on we're at 20 microseconds per division there's 10 microseconds per division so let's calculate what this frequency is 
So 10 per division, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, what is that, about 53? All clear, so 1 divided by 53 times, there's a million microseconds in a second, so to get our hertz, we're going to have to times this by a million. So we're almost at 19,000 hertz. So 19,000 times a second, this little digital servo is sending voltage pulses to the motor. And again, just like the analog servo, you know, the voltage, it's seeing a roughly 6 volts. You know, it drops a little bit when the load increases. But, it, you know, the voltage doesn't go up, it just the voltage is being held to the motor longer as the force increases. And this drop-off voltage, again, if any uh, electrical engineers want to comment, I'm guessing that's when the, uh, the, uh, the voltage is cut off, um, the field collapses in the windings, and you get a negative pulse as the field collapses. So that's really quite, I wasn't expecting the frequency to be that high. Roughly 20, you know, 20,000 hertz, 20k, well, 19,000, 19, 19k hertz, 19,000 times a second, these little motors are getting their voltage pulses. And those are divided into blocks of roughly 300 hertz. Very interesting. This, this by the way, is a tail servo, cheapy one. Uh, I've stripped the gear set in it, but um, I don't know if I don't have another digital servo. I'm gonna cannibalize at this point, but it'd be interesting to know if other digital servos, if they break them up into 300 hertz, those blocks, and then if they're further divided up into the actual voltage pulses at roughly 19,000 hertz crazy. But hopefully that uh, helps you understand the difference between analog and digital servos. Digital ter servos take that 50 hertz um, input uh, PWM frequency and convert it into many many pulses, voltage pulses a second going to the motor. That's why they hold so much better, why their response rate is a lot better, and also of course why their power consumption is a lot higher. Um, but very cool stuff if you're into that. Hope that helped you kind of understand the difference between analog and digital and hope the whole servo uh, video series here helped you understand how RC servos work a little bit better, how they get their information and how they, uh, how they position themselves based on the PWM um, signal they get. Cheers folks!